Um, I, I won't speak long. It's just an honor to be here and to hear this level of conversation. I shouldn't say conversation. This level of dialogue. This level of, of, of informed dialogue. That's why we call what we do Mbani in these moments. Mbani from Kikongo meaning a house without rooms, meaning a place where privacy has no room. What we think empties into what we say and we all build it together. So that's the you know, central Africans we say that. Um, every year that we have had, there's only been one year in the history of the Philadelphia Schools where we didn't decide on a summer text. And that was the first year. And that text was so awful that we said they would never let anyone else pick our text again. <laughs> there have been years we ran two books. Uh, this year has is, is, is been a bit of a challenge because there's so much stuff out there. And so um, in keeping with this theme, with this conversation, uh, the book that looks like it's going to emerge is a very old book and a very new book at the same time. Um, there was a brother uh, who was stolen from Africa when he was a teenager born in 1841, and he was brought here on the last boat to come from Africa, uh, illegally, in 1860, he was 19 years old. Uh, the Clotilda, the enslavers that kidnapped him and 116 of his uh, fellow Africans off the west coast of West Africa, some people said they were trying to win a bet to see if they could sneak another boat in because the trade, the so-called trade in slave Africans had been outlawed for 50 years by that point. Mm -hmm. But they were still doing it, of course. But they mm -hmm. snuck them in through the Gulf of Mexico into Mobile Bay, Mobile, Alabama. And interestingly enough, with the hurricanes that hit, you know, that devastated our family in Puerto Rico and St. Vincent, I mean, just, you know, when it hit and lifted the outer edge of the southern states, it actually revealed the outline of where that boat was burned so that these white boys could hide it from the authorities. And it actually, because the, the tide receded into the ocean and lay bare. This happened, this just happened a couple of months ago during the hurricane, it lay bare the place, oh, there, damn, there's the Clotilda. Because they burned it right there in the harbor. Nobody ever knew where it was, so it actually is very interesting. So a lot of ways the ancestors present themselves. Um, we always try to pick a book that makes us think but it's also provocative. Something that, and one criteria is we want something that nobody would ever think to put in the hands of young people. Mm -hmm. So this brother, free from enslavement in 1865 in the Civil War, 24 years old, decided that he and his family and the other Africans who were stolen would stay there in Alabama, and they created something called Africa Town. And it survives to this day. And I remember many years ago, here at Freedom School, during Mbangi on a Wednesday afternoon, uh, I put up a picture of him and his two youngest grandchildren. And there's a very famous picture of him sitting with his two youngest grandchildren. And one of those sisters ended up moving to Canada. And she had just passed away. We talked about it at an Mbangi. This is about maybe 15 years ago. That's how close this is. He passed away in 1935, which means he was alive when people who know people in this room, y'all know somebody was born before 1935 mm -hmm. in this room. So he was alive when they were alive. That's how close this enslavement is. So the book, Carter G. Woodson sent a young anthropologist from Florida who had gotten her master's in anthropology at Columbia University, sent her down to collect this man's story. And she went to get his story and she interviewed him and she found out that he wasn't just gonna tell his story. So she had to spend weeks, then months, then over years. She got to know him a little bit. Then she wrote his story down. She rewrote it. She rewrote it. Eventually, she became a pretty good novelist and poet, and not poet, novelist, essayist. And she tried to get this book published. The man who, by that time, was known by his European name, they tried to get his memoir published. And no publisher would take it. <laughs> so it stayed in special collections in the collection of one of her uh, friends, Elaine Locke from Philadelphia. Of course, yeah. Elaine Locke uh, Elementary School is. I guess they knocked it down. Is Elaine Locke still here? You know, <laughs> very good. That's very important because Elaine Locke is one of the other books we were thinking about. They just published the, his life. His father, Pliny, this has a whole other Philadelphia school. There's some amazing people. But anyway, Elaine Locke's papers are housed at Howard University. 
and a, and a sister finally got this uh, piece published. So even though Zornel Hurston has been gone for many years, and this brother passed in 1935, the book just came out. It's called Barracoon. It's the story of the last slave ball. And so we're thinking maybe we should use that because what he talks about is everything that happened to him from the time somebody put their hands on him in West Africa to what happened here to what they did after he got enslaved. And what it helps us understand is that, you know, in some stories it ain't no good guys. There was some black people involved in this. Mm -hmm. and, but it shows you the resilience. And so in terms of the prison industrial complex and mass incarceration, in this brother's story is, the, is, is all the explanation of how we ended up in this position that we're in. So we're going to read Barakum this summer. And then surround it with a whole lot of other stuff. So we'll, I think that's what we're going to do. So all right.